Yeah, so uh, I'm Milt McCall. Uh, I live here in Los Altos Hills. Um, kids all go to Los Altos High School. Actually, they've all graduated now. Um, so in my past career, I actually played professional football for the 49ers back in the 1980s. <laughs> To be honest with you, I actually was recruited by USC, and uh, in fact, at the time they were um, they were national champions at the time. Uh, and I looked at USC and the other school. That, I mean, I, I got recruited by a lot of colleges, but the ones that I cared about the most were USC and then Harvard because they had a really good uh, academic program, obviously. Um, and USC had a really good football program at the time, but I thought Stanford had sort of the best combination of both really good athletics, but also really good academics. So that's why I went to Stanford. I am an orthopedic surgeon at the Sports Orthopedic and Rehabilitation uh, Office in uh, Redwood City, California. I was the uh, number two orthopedic surgeon for the San Francisco 49ers uh, from 1992 to 1995. I uh, was uh, served as the backup uh, doctor to Dr. Michael Dillingham. I traveled extensively with the uh, San Francisco 49ers and uh, attended uh, all of their games, both home and away, playoffs and um, uh, Super Bowl, and uh, was uh, also involved in their uh, uh, draft procedures, as well as taking care of their injured athletes. I, I was fortunate to play in two Super Bowls. One was uh, in Detroit, Michigan. That was my very first one back in the January of 1982. Uh, and then in January of 1985, uh, we qualified for the Super Bowl. Um, it was actually one of our best uh, records ever. We had only lost one game. I would say the guy that probably most impressed me with all my career was Joe Montana. I mean, he was just an incredible quarterback. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I wasn't on the field when we, we would do it, but everybody kind of remembers the, what they, they called the catch when uh, Dwight Clark caught the ball in the end zone against Dallas in the very last seconds of the game. And uh, just before that, we, Dallas had just scored, and I remember Joe getting in the huddle, and this is what the guys told me. They said, he just looked at everybody and said, we're going to drive down the field 80 yards in the next minute, we're going to win this game. And it, it wasn't like there was a question in anybody's mind. He had, he had so much confidence, and everybody, he exuded so much confidence that everybody saw that confidence. So um, what, what an incredible athlete and uh, just a great guy and um, just a team leader. Uh, at the time, the 49ers were still trying to establish themselves as a dynasty, and uh, that game, again, could have gone either way. It was in the, the last moments of the game, and uh, Dwight Clark made an incredible catch from Joe Montana to seal a victory that uh, helped propel them to their uh, Super Bowl championship run. And uh, uh, Dwight was a great guy who went on to serve as a, a player personnel uh, uh, in the f uh, director in the front office for Eddie DeBartolo uh, after that and has remained a favorite of the 49ers ever since. It was, uh, it was the 1981, well, actually 82, when we played in the Super Bowl. And I recovered a fumble right before halftime. Uh, and we ended up scoring, and it ended up being just enough difference to help us win the game. But I, I took the ball, I ran off the field, and I, I hit it under the bench for the game. And then I kept it. And uh, I've had it in my attic for 30 years. And just today, I ran into the guy at, uh, that does all the, uh, um, um, the museum for the 49ers and I gave him one of my old uh, sweatshirts that had my number on it and I gave him the football and told him to put it in the 49er museum and so he's gonna put it in the 49er museum. Concussions in football, that's, that is a big, uh, big, big, big issue going on today. You know, I was, uh, I was a kind of guy that had concussions. I mean, I had a concussion in high school that was pretty bad and they sort of kept me out of, obviously, from playing for a little while. Um, back then we weren't as worried about it as they are today. There was one where he didn't really remember things for about 24 hours. So that was a little different in college. Through high school and I got to college and then when I was in college I had a bad concussion and the doctor said, well if you have another concussion like that you should stop playing football. And, uh, but I didn't have another big one in, 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 uh, in college and then when I got to the pros I got another concussion and uh, this one was, uh, was not so good because I ended up having some double vision for, for kind of for a while. But it's, it's made me really aware of what concussions can be like. Um, I'm not sure you can prevent them. I think it's sort of part of the game. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important that the NFL and you know, colleges you know, study it and try to learn technologies and 
people have concussions, they keep them off the field when, when they shouldn't be playing. I think in my day they would put people back on without even thinking. Nowadays they're much more careful about that. Um, but it's, uh, I think it's like uh, you know, driving a car, there's always a risk that you're going to be in an accident, and uh, you just got to be as careful as you can. So Chris Borland's kind of an interesting guy. I actually had lunch with him here in Los Altos not too long ago. He sort of called me up and wanted to talk about you know, the, the whole concussion thing and what he's doing with it. Um, you know, I, I, I can respect the guy for making a decision to do that if that's what he, now, you know, I haven't talked to him. It sounds like his concussions were, were pretty serious. He was getting, you know, headaches and nausea and some other things. And, uh, you know, his, his quality of life was being affected, and I think that's certainly something. Um, I think for someone that just happens to get a concussion, I don't think that's necessarily the reason to stop playing in the NFL. I did have someone tell me if I had another concussion like that, I should stop playing football in high school. Um, fortunately, I got through high school and I got to college. And then when I was in college, I had a bad concussion, and the doctor said, "Well, if you have another concussion like that, you should stop playing football." And uh, but I didn't have another big one in in in, uh, in college. And then when I got to the pros, I got another concussion, and uh, this one was uh, was not so good because I ended up having some double vision for for kind of for a while. Uh, luckily, I was able to. Uh, they were able to do some surgery and correct the double vision, so I'm I'm fine today. But it's it's made me really aware of what concussions can be like. Um, I'm not sure you can prevent them. I think it's sort of part of the game. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important that the NFL and you know colleges you know study it and try to learn technologies. And when people have concussions, they keep them off the field when, when they shouldn't be playing. I think in my day they would put people back on without even thinking. Nowadays they're much more careful about that. Um, but it's uh, I think it's like uh, you know driving a car. There's always a risk that you're going to be in an accident, and uh, you just got to be as careful as you can. The guys in the team, there were some guys that actually had pregame preps that were maybe a little more sophisticated than mine. Uh, one guy named Hacksaw Reynolds used to uh, actually dress up before breakfast and he would come in completely taped with his whole uniform on and eat breakfast in his uniform and then he would actually drive to the stadium and um, in his Volkswagen, he had a Volkswagen car, and he would drive down Highway 101 and people would see him and honk at him as he was driving by in his football uniform on the way to the game. So. Um, now that was probably the exception. Um, for me, I was just, uh, I always like to make sure I had the right meal, and then just, I was always studying my plays to make sure I knew them really well, but. So, I mean, I think, you know, as I say, there's no I in team, and I think that's really important. When we won the Super Bowl in our first season, 81 season, we had very few guys that were even well known at all. Almost all of them were, you know, Joe Montana was barely in his third year and had really hadn't even started, you know, in the NFL, Ronnie Lott, you know, was a was a rookie. Um, you know, he and the the, the three de defensive backs. I mean, those guys had never even played together, so they all had to learn how to play together. Um, so it just t tells you it, it didn't it didn't take a lot of really experienced guys to win. You just had to play together well.